Hey guys, uh, today I'm going to go over a process that I use to generate background terrains inside of 3D Code. I typically start, start off in the voxel sculpt space. Uh, you could do this in the surface sculpting space as well, but I typically do it in voxels uh, because I find it to be a little bit more stable and more efficient for me. So uh, why don't we go ahead and get started. I'll start by bringing in a cube. And I'll scale this cube up a bit. I'll probably do 100 by 100. And I could leave the height at 30. That's OK. Um, I'm going to increase the density for the uh, volume layer. So let's go ahead and just bump that up to maybe 4x. And let's go ahead and apply. OK, as we can see, we've got about a million uh, estimated triangles in this box. We're definitely going to need to go higher than that. So I'm going to go ahead and bump up the sample again. All right, so we can start with 4 million. That's a good, a good starting place. Um, what I've done is I've generated some height maps or terrains in a third party package, and I'm bringing those into 3D code. So uh, I've created a folder called terrain, and I've got some of those height maps in here. So to apply those, I'll typically use the absolute brush. And uh, I'll set my E panel to use the stamp mode. And so now I'll just go ahead and start stamping some of my brushes. And right now I'm just going to block in some large shapes. I'm using the same alpha, but um, just trying to get some base kind of going. And with the stamp tool, it's really nice because I can kind of increase the um, amplitude of the terrain or the height field that I'm bringing in by uh, increasing the strength of that brush. So now if I increase the strength, I can start to add a little bit more peakiness to it. And while I'm doing this dynamically rotating, getting a shape and placement. I'll go ahead and switch to some other brushes for variety. It takes a little while to switch between these brushes. They're really big um, since they're height map. Some of them are, you know, 80 megs. Um, some are larger, some are smaller. But uh, this will really kind of help get some kind of base detail going in a pretty quick, pretty quick manner. Like right now, I don't have anything in mind of what I'm creating. I'm just kind of showing you this process and hopefully um, you'll be able to plan something out and a little bit more useful. Something else to note is some of these height maps uh, will have hard edges. Typically, they're going to be a square map. So if you start to notice that you're getting these edges that are cutting into your sculpt, um, it might be because the fall off is set to zero. And you can see how harsh, if I start to bring it in, you can see how harsh the edge is. Though this does give you the best detail, um, I don't want to have to work on deleting those edges later. So what I'll do is I'll bring up the fall off and find something that works. Maybe 30% might help. So it's a little bit more faint. Maybe a little bit more. Let's go to like 45, I think. That's okay. If I go big enough on this one, I can just kind of ride that edge off to the side there. All right, I'm getting there. There's something happening here. All right, so I've got some mountains going on. Um, let me grab another brush just to break up some of this variety here. I'll boost my multiplier up. All right, just 
just a few more. I typically don't like to get too like peaky or sharp on the ridges if possible. Um, okay, so I think we've got something for our initial setup going and that looks like it's going to be okay. So I know I'm at 4 million right now, but I'm going to optimize a little bit more. And uh, I'll do that by typically going to my cutoff tool now and I'll cut some of these off. And that's going to reduce my overall triangle count. So now I'm at three and a half, which is working pretty well. But I'll go ahead and do at this point is I'm going to up, or I'm going to um, increase the resolution for my next level of sculpt, and I can do that either by pressing the the increase resolution from here, which is going to bring me to about 12, 13 million, which I think will be fine. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do it that way. The other way to do it would have been just to hit the space bar and then uh, do the resolution resample. And then I can basically type in uh, a resolution that I want. But I think I would, I would end up getting to about 13 million or 10 million. So this is going to be fine. All right, so let me go back to my brushes. And now I'll start adding a little bit more detail. To get back to my absolute brush. Mm. Bring, bring it down a little bit. Sometimes I don't really want the height, I just want the textural detail. Like so. But then there are times where it's great to have like little cliffs going on. It's a little much. If you hold control, it'll actually push in so you can create cavities. Grab a few more brushes. Some of these height maps, I didn't spend a lot of time making making them nice. I just wanted something for an example. Um, this one didn't really seem to. Oh, here we go. Okay, that is too sharp. Yeah, that's going to be nice for creating some ridges. Let's see. Not a good not a good place for it. a few more. And I do want to start to create some um, overhangs. 
so it doesn't just look like a Y up height field. Let's see. I'll increase the multiplier. This will peak it a little bit more and that'll start to protrude a little bit more too. So now we're starting to get a little bit more of that edging or that ledge, kind of a ledge quality. There we go. So now we're getting overhangs. I don't want to make too many of them, but I think I'm going to add more. Again, I don't have anything in mind, so. And now what I'll do is I'll increase that fall off so it's really high. And that way I can maintain just that kind of like the, the peak of it. But no, that's too peaky. That doesn't have a whole lot of um, textural quality to it. So let me supplement. And then if you find that you're getting something too, too peaky, that's not going to be really nice. Um, just hold the shift key, bring your, your uh, strength down, hold the shift key and kind of just melt. You can melt it away. Or you can just switch to a different brush and do it that way. And then we can go back. Maybe I'll use the extrude brush this time. The extrude's nice because it it really does like it contours oops to the curvature a lot better than the absolute. So now what I can do is kind of start adding into this again. Like so. And then I can create ledges right along the edge here. Again, this brush is a little too peaky for me. Let me try this one. I think I'm just running into a resolution problem. Um, let me res it up just a little bit more here. Now I can just kind of do it this way. Let's just go to 20. You know, the other thing I could have done is switched over to surface mode. I should have done that. In fact, I think I'm going to do that. Okay, now we're at 20 million. And we'll see if this is going to help. Okay, so definitely there's more resolution here. So now let's go back to some of these other brushes. Let me reduce the peak on that. I will say the one thing with working with voxels, you're not going to have as sharp detail as you would with surface. So I think what I'm going to do is let me just try this one. And then I think I'm going to switch over to surface mode. Yeah, let me search, switch over to surface. So click the V. So it turns to an S and now we're in surface mode. And let's see if this changes anything.
Okay. Yeah, that's better. All right. Well, so now we've got some mountains here. Um, actually, one more. This is a little, this needs a little bit more. There we go. Just get some, just a little bit of detail in this area. Okay, cool. So now we've got a, a terrain. Um, next step is now we're going to create that low poly terrain. So now we'll go into orthographic mode, snap to the top, jump over to the retopo room. Instead of drawing the rectangle, we can also use the points tool. And we can just drop four points like so, and then just right click in the middle. All right, perfect. There we go. So now we can increase the um, tessellation to whatever we want. Let's go a little bit more. And this is going to be in the background. And uh, I, this is super low, but I do want to show you how nice it actually works. So let's just keep it this low. Right now we'll, we'll go one more. That's really low. All right, so now we've got that. Perfect. Next step is just to go ahead and bake our normal maps to this, making sure we've got a good distance. That looks fine. The interior looks good. And let's just go ahead and bake. I'm going to set this to an 8K map. And let's see what we get. Okay, we'll jump back into the paint room and we'll hide our sculpt mesh like so. And now we've got a really low res background terrain. So here's our wireframe. And you see all the details that we were able to capture, which includes the overhangs. In some of these areas, let me see. Do I did I actually add any? Uh, it doesn't look like I did. Cool. Well, that's that's a, a fairly quick way of creating some complex backgrounds in your set extension or in your um, far distant uh, environments. You could always render these in the render room. And you can see that it does actually do a good job of keeping and maintaining those uh, details. Perfect. This as a base and then painting on top, adding the textures and material, I think um, will go a long way. All right. Well, I hope you guys found this helpful. All right, and uh, I'll see you guys next time.